Hi everyone, my name is Pedram Navid and I'm the Head of Data Engineering and DevRel here at Dexter Labs. And today I'll be talking to you about embedded ELT and how you might not need to use managed solutions like Fivetran. All right, let's get started. So first, I think we can all agree that you don't really have a data platform until you start ingesting data. And yet it seems like ingesting data is the least fun part of any data stack. I might even go so far as to say it's the least sexy job of the 21st century right behind data scientists. And while it may be incredibly unsexy, I do think it's one of the most important pieces of the stack to consider, despite it also being one of the most neglected. Now, I've never met someone who enjoyed writing data ingestion pipelines, but when we think about it, there are many reasons why. First, it's really fraught with difficulties, right? Um, everything from changing schemas, type conversions, item potence, error handling, observability, scheduling, these are all concerns that takes what might have been an easy task, but once you start digging deep, really shows the subtle complexities that can make it difficult to do well repeatedly. And so it's no wonder that we've seen the rise of managed solutions like Fivetran, Stitch, and Airbyte to kind of help figure out this gap for us. Now, they offer up promises of being a single platform for ingestion. They might say that they are going to save engineering time or reduce the burden of ingesting data. But I'm going to argue that there's a double-edged sword here with these managed services. And often we end up paying for it in unexpected ways. You see, managed solutions may offer up promises of free ingest in the first initial days, but the pricing structure of these services have perverse incentives. When you're charged by row, whether it's active or not, it really means that your cost will continuously increase so long as you're using their services. There's really no way to maintain a stable or predictable cost structure with these services. Think of a simple case where you have an events table for customer activity, and each customer generates a constant number of events per month. This, this means that your cost will increase linearly with every new customer that joins your platform, both as old and new customers continue to generate events. This can quickly balloon your ingestion costs and force you to make hard decisions about what data you choose to ingest in order to keep your costs constant. Unpredictable pricing is just part of the picture, but not the whole picture, right? When you think about your ingestion occurring in multiple platforms, that aren't managed within a single orchestrator, you're also faced with a problem of data silos. Because everything is happening across multiple tools, it's always not clear where ingestion is happening or where a problem occurred. When stuff is split evenly across different tools and products, it really affects your organization and then it leads to reduced developer productivity. But I think the biggest concern with all of these platforms is really what happens when a backfill occurs, right? We think about when a development team might add a new column in a database or a RevOps person, you know, decides to add a new property in a HubSpot contact field and that propagates into the history. All of a sudden, one morning, you're going to wake up and find an unexpected bill for a situation that is really completely outside of your control. And I think this is really the core problem of some of these managed solutions is, again, their pricing structure makes it very difficult to do simple things that you typically don't really think about. And the problem is this added cost has actually no incremental value for you, right? Adding a new property probably doesn't even change anything about the context that you have. For example, that new column might not be even ingested by your Fivetran, yet you're still going to get charged for it. And I think that's really the fundamental problem we're trying to solve here. So all of that is kind of why we built Embedded ELT. We wanted it to make it easier for you to get started with ingestion without having to build everything from scratch. That's really all it is. And when you think about the concerns I brought up earlier, you can think of these either as concerns with you know, logic, transformation, or with orchestration, right? And the reason we tend to rely on these heavyweight tools that can be expensive is because they often have to couple both of these things together. There's many different types of tooling out there, right? We have the SaaS solutions like the Five Trans or maybe the Stitch. And one thing we all know is that they can be quite expensive, especially when it comes to things like backfills. Now you may think, okay, well, there's open source tools out there as well, like Airbyte or Meltano. I think the problem with these tools is that they're often heavyweight and not always reliable. Uh, because they're trying to couple both of these concerns together, they have to build an orchestrator on top of their transformation and logic. It can be quite heavy and hard to use these things well. I think last time I checked, Airbyte had something like 19 services as part of their Docker Compose. And so 
you're left with maybe the lightweight solutions that on the surface seem simple and well-built, but again, the problem is because they don't have that orchestrator, they're alone not self-sufficient. And so what I think we need to start doing is stop reinventing the orchestrator. We already have a great orchestrator called Dexter, and maybe instead of having multiple tools that are all acting as these siloed orchestrators, what if you just had one orchestrator and use that as a purpose-built tool for solving our ingestion needs? Without one of those tools, what you end up with is a complex data platform that is just a mess, right? Everything is a web of interdependencies. Is it possible to know where one thing starts and another thing begins? And it's really hard to hunt down why something went wrong when something did. If your stakeholders need to understand a particular model or they have a certain SLA on one of them, your engineers are left trying to untangle a web of lineage in order to figure out how to make that happen. But what happens is if you move and migrate towards Daxter's asset-centric view, you end up with a clean, simplified view of your data platform. By relying on a single orchestrator, we have a clear insight into all the assets and all the dependencies they produce. We have clear policies on how they should be refreshed. So instead of splitting the orchestrator, what we've decided here at Daxter is that we're gonna embed ELT within Daxter to help really give data leaders better control over their costs, improve observability over one of the most critical functions of a data platform. So let's talk a little bit about what we've been cooking here at Dankster Labs, right? We've taken the best of the lightweight ELT solutions out there, and we've paired it with the most full-featured orchestrator you can think of, Dankster. So our first integration is with a great lightweight tool called Sling. It makes it very easy to ingest and load data to and from databases, file storage, and data warehouses. With just a few lines of code, you can easily ingest data without having to worry about backfills or number of rows. Now, while Sling is primarily focused on databases, we're also building out integrations with another great embedded ELT tool called DLT. DLT is a great way of writing pipelines that cover everything else from Salesforce to HubSpot to even custom APIs and web requests you put yourself together. It offers a clean, simple interface for writing pipeline code. All coupled with Dexter, it finally gives you the ability to build a great data platform that covers the long tail of ingestion needs your team may have all without worrying about backfills and increased costs. We're actively working on this integration, so keep an eye out for that release very soon. Now, because it's so flexible, there's actually many different ways you can start to think about how you could architect your ingestion pipelines. Let's start with a few here. We'll start with a very basic example. This is a data warehouse architecture, and you can see just by swapping out something like Fivetran for Sling and DLT, you can start syncing from your backend databases and SaaS applications without that fear of unpredictable cost. Your CFO would be happier because you're going to reduce your spend, bring costs under control, which we always like. In fact, with one of our customers, we've seen them reduce their bill by $30,000 a year simply by removing Fivetrain from the equation. If you really wanted to impress your CFO, though, you could go even a step further and swap out Snowflake for data stored in S3 as Parquet files. Now, Sling also supports writing to S3 as Parquet, which could be a really great way to get something simple set up that way. From there, you can use DuckDB and DBT to create materialized views on top of your data. Now, what I will say is that this works well for a single instance, but because DuckDB doesn't support concurrency well, you want to be a little bit careful about how you architect this. You might want to use DuckDB and uh, DBT more as an ETL step and then expose those downstream as tables somewhere else, like in a Postgres. That's a little bit easier for people to consume. For a more advanced use case, you might want to consider going full in with a Delt for a data lake. In this example, we have Arrow and Delta Lake, and you can use those to build a real data lake uh, here. This way, your stakeholders can leverage like something like a Delta Lake with tools like Databricks. You can access, process, and transform data much more simply. And we even have a really great Delta Lake integration that can make it easy to build one out using Daxter itself. Okay, I think that's enough talk. Now what we're gonna do is jump into a demo and I will show you kind of how Sling works and what this all kind of means and how it's put together. All right, so let's get started with the demo. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just start Daxter by running Daxter dev here in my terminal and then pop that open in our browser. So what you can see here is our global asset lineage. And here we see all the assets that we have. And this is just a little simple demo that I've created. 
You'll see it contains all kinds of things from some plain old Python scripts, a Steam pipe integration. But what we're going to focus on today is really these two uh, Sling integrations, which is writing data into DuckDB from Postgres. And so we've got a couple sample tickets and events tables here. These are hosted in Postgres. And then what we're going to do is write them into DuckDB. You can see this is written into a tickets table in DuckDB, which is then processed downstream by DBT into this daily tickets. And you can actually even see the raw SQL here, which is kind of nice. So what I'll do is I'll just materialize this one here just to see it go. And you can see it runs pretty quickly. We can click on view run and hopefully it starts. There we go. And it's writing in, oh, it's so fast. Okay, it connected to our source database. It connected to the target. It dropped the table because we're doing a full refresh, but you could imagine doing an incremental here as well. We wrote 74 rows and we can even look at our asset here and we can see, you know, 74 rows. I'm sure if we look at the plot, we'll see there's always 74 rows because this data is actually not being updated. And you can see the lineage and kind of how it flows through the system. So that's what it looks like in the UI itself. But let's code and kind of see how we define it. Okay, so really, I think we'll start with the resource. I think that's probably the simplest place to start. We've got a couple of things. We've got a DuckDB database. Here, we're using something local, obviously, right? But you could imagine using Mother Duck if you wanted to connect um, on the cloud. And then we've defined like some sample uh, Postgres connection. This is just like a sample database. Obviously, you probably don't want to put your passwords in your local um, Python file. You'll probably use an environment variable here. And all we do really from there is once we embed or import the Dexter embedded ELT package, uh, we really define a resource and we've got a source and a target. And so our source is going to be that Postgres source. Our target is going to be that DuckDB destination. And we provide it with the connection string. And then really that's all it takes to sort of set up a resource. Once we have the resource set up, we'll pull up the assets here and I'll show you what, what it takes to really create a sync. We've got this uh, build sling asset, right? So this is just a helper function that builds the asset for you. It takes an asset spec as an input, which is really you know the name of the asset, the group name. There's all these other sort of attributes you can define as well, like a code version if you wanted to. And then we, uh, we tell it, you know, what's the name of the source, which is called tickets. And where do we want to send it, which is, you know, tickets raw. And we do the same thing over here, right? We've got events raw. We're taking our source stream events and we're running it to events raw in DuckDB. That's all it really takes to take data from one database and put it into another. You could imagine this working just as well for something like a Snowflake or an S3 bucket as well. And so how do we use this downstream? Well, if you look at our next asset, here's another asset. It's dependent on the upstream raw tickets, right? And you can see here, we're just running some SQL. We're actually selecting from tickets raw and we're creating a table called tickets. Not a very complicated query, obviously, but this just goes to show that we can create this tickets asset using this tickets raw table that was created using Sling. And then we do some outputs. We just give it the number of rows, table name, and that kind of fun stuff. So let's hop back into our browser. We can take a look over here. Uh, we can materialize this. Nothing should change because the upstream data hasn't really changed. But once this runs, you'll see it create that tickets table in DuckDB using that raw data that was ingested. And here we go. We can see, you know, 74 rows, 22 columns, and here's the name of the ticket and the schema and all that. So that's it. That's really all it takes to run um, Embedded ELT with Dexter. We are coming up with a couple of new features that I want to talk to you a little bit about. So one thing we've noticed when we talk to people is often they want to have multiple resources. And the way we've defined it here, it's pretty much, you know, a single source and a single target. But what we've heard from people is they want to swap out targets. For example, depending on the environment, they might want to use um, a staging database and then a production database once they deploy that into production. So we're going to change this up a little bit and make it possible for you to uh, swap out connections. And the other thing we've heard is that often people, um, they might have multiple sources or multiple targets they want to include. So what we're going to do next is swap that out and make it possible to send a list of streams, for example, that you want to ingest from. So look forward to that coming soon. And uh, we'd love to hear more from what you think. Let's jump back into the slides and talk a little bit about our roadmap.
All right, so that was the demo. Now we're gonna quickly talk about our future roadmap and tell you where to get started, right? So we touched a bit on this during the demo, but really our next step here is to make it easier to add multiple connections and targets and have a multiple streams of tables coming in. Because what we've heard from the community is that this integration works really well when you've got a simple use case. But once you start to think about, you know, a list of tables that you want to start to ingest now, it gets a little bit harder. So what we're going to do next is update that to be able to provide, you know, like a list of tables or even wildcards, which I think will be really, really exciting. And the next big thing really we are really excited about is our DLT integration. So we're building this out next as well. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions on how you want to kind of see this or your use cases, we'd love to hear from you because this is something we're really excited about. And we've already done a little bit of work on this uh, through a blog post that we wrote, but we're going to actually build it now embedded within Dijkster as well. So look forward to that. And finally, this is you know where you can learn more about Dijkster. We'd welcome you to join our Slack channel. Uh, feel free to check us out to try out Dijkster Cloud for a free trial. And if you have any questions, if you have any comments on any of this stuff, I personally would love to hear from you. I'm pedram at dijksterlabs.com. So feel free to email me with any ideas or suggestions you have on where you want to see this taken from here. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching and we hope you've enjoyed this.